Okay, so I'm very happy to be here today and on stage for the next five minutes. And because I don't have a lot of time, I'm going to jump directly into the answer. And the answer is yes. Yes, and the question to that answer is, can Backstage deliver value beyond engineering teams across the organization to uh, other uh, people? My name is Olivier Lichti. I'm founder and CTO of Avalia Systems. And one problem space that we explore with our clients is how can we better understand and explain what is happening in the black box of software development? And can we communicate the business value, the business impact of uh, technology? There are two reasons why we decided to use Backstage to work on this problem. And this is because in the solution space, Backstage gives us two important capabilities. The first one is the generic uh, data model that we can use to create a model of the entire uh, software ecosystem. The second capability is this very generic application development framework that we can use. And so with these two capabilities, we are equipped to implement very different use cases for different people in the organization. Instead of talking about developer portals, we tend to speak about digital portals. And in the projects that we do, we focus a lot on content, insights, and stories. And we create personalized experiences by selecting the type of information and the way the information is presented to the users. Doing these projects, we have identified three themes that we find important and that we keep revisiting. These themes are revisit the UX, embrace model extensions, and be smart about content. Revisit the UX. I think we can all agree that even if the UI of Backstage is very logical, is well structured, it drives us to the design of portals that really feel like developer tools. And if you consider non-technical people, this can be overwhelming, if not scary. I think we can also agree that the table view in the catalog is very effective to search for information, but it's not very good to understand the overall structure of the ecosystem, its state, and the relationships between the entities. The good news is that, in the end, a backstage instance is a React application. So with some work, it's possible to turn the UI inside out. Instead of adding custom panels, custom tabs into Backstage, we prefer to look at it the other way. We look at a broader collaborative web application, and we inject Backstage user interface elements into that broader application. This is a technique that we use to create a first experience with the portal that is more appealing for non-technical people. Embrace model extensions. I mentioned before that the system model is really one of the features that drew us to, to Backstage in the first place. And at the same time, if we read the documentation, the documentation makes us cautious about modifications, extensions of the system model. Is it a good idea to change uh, entity uh, kinds? Is it a good idea to uh, define new relations? So we are aware of the uh, trade-offs, but because for us the modeling part is so important, we tend to uh, favor them. 
In addition to the taxonomies, an important part is the um, metadata that you can associate, that you can link to entities in the catalog. And here, I would like to make an analogy to a GIS. The GIS gives you different perspectives on the world by allowing you to use different layers on the map. And the idea is that Backstage can become the GIS of your software ecosystem. Because the user interface of Backstage is fully customizable, it's possible to create these interactive data visualizations, these interactive maps. In this example, we are looking at the organizational structure, where squads are groups um, in tribes. And when you have these interactive visualizations rendered into backstage, you can annotate them to represent the state of the, acquisition, of the uh, ecosystem. Here, it's the happiness of the teams, but you can do similar things with the quality of the systems or the business value generated in the domains. Last but not least, be smart about content. Creating a digital portal is not trivial, but we have when you have released the first version of your portal, you have only done one part of the job. If the goal is to generate a stream of insights, content, and stories, how are you going to keep this stream lively and relevant for the people? Who is going to do that work? and how much time is it going to, uh, to take. There are, of course, different strategies that you need to, uh, to combine, but one very interesting uh, use case that we see is to combine software analytics with generative AI. And one thing that we have done is to implement data pipelines where we combine these tools I don't have the time to go into a lot of details, but just to give you an idea, it's possible to extract data from systems, for example, issues uh, captured in GitHub, to give this data structure to ChatGPT and to ask what are interesting questions that you could ask about this data set to then ask ChatGPT to write the code that once executed can answer the question proposed by ChatGPT, and in the end, to ask ChatGPT to write a story about the answers in a way that makes sense to an engineer, a CTO, or a CFO and therefore creating this content that will be uh, understandable and make sense for the different personas. I hope that this has uh, triggered your curiosity. I will be at the conference uh, for the whole week, and I would love to uh, chat and show you a demo of these uh, portals. Thank you.